Last year we we have been witnessing many rapid changes in the world. I mean, since uh, September 11th, uh, people are talking about year zero and uh, nothing just seems the same anymore uh, for a whole lot of people on this planet uh, like I wrote down uh, from war against terrorism to sizing down citizens rights and so on uh, how big impact on the world affairs does the September 11 have uh, from the perspective of empire well it seems to me that September 11th did not change uh, developments in global affairs but perhaps made some of the alternatives more clear. What, um, from my perspective, there are two alternatives or two choices facing the global ruling powers, the global elites. The one, one alternative is a, uh, a form of U.S. imperialism. Um, in other words, a, a form in which the United States would be the center of global affairs in economic, political, and military terms and would uh, essentially dictate, as a, as a nation state, uh, various developments in, in these areas. In a way, this would be a, a, a recreation of the form of the European imperialisms with now the U.S. as nation state at its center. The other alternative, it seems to me, for the ruling global elites is something like what Negri and I call empire. In other words, <coughs> A, a ruling form in which the uh, United States would not be the unilateral uh, and central uh, decision maker in global affairs, but rather that there would be a, uh, a network of ruling powers, a kind of, if you like, rather than the unilateralism of the U.S., which really leads to a kind of U.S. imperialism, empire would be kind of a multilateralism, even a, an extended multilateralism, because it would be a sharing out of powers not only among the dominant nation states, but, but other dominant uh, economic and, and, and political forces. It seems to me that what, what the September 11th, with not so much the acts of September 11th, but the reactions to September 11th, have um, clarified this alternative. In other words, that these are the that these are the two choices. It's quite true, of course, that most of the um, political, uh, well, let's say the President of the United States and his, and his allies have acted since September toward the formation of, a, of, a, of some kind of U.S. imperialism. Um, my view is that the other alternative um, something like what we call empire, in other words, uh, this uh, much more distributed network-like force uh, formation of global power, is really the only um, winning strategy from their perspective. In other words, they, that, that if, if what the global elites are interested in, as I think it is, are interested in secure and stable markets and um, the profits of of, of the possibilities of global, of capitalist globalization, I think that U.S. imperialism will not serve those interests, and that that's what I think eventually the um, will be even the consensus among the ruling elites. The September 11 actually deepened the economic recession, which uh, currently presents a major threat to neoliberal agenda of the empire. As right. we put it. How do you uh, comment on growing economic instability inside the so-called first world? What can this crisis be attributed to? Yeah, there, are many, there are many things that, that, such that this uh, economic decline should be attributed to. Uh, one, one very simple one is that the um, Right. That doesn't require me to say is that the uh, that the United States stock market was was overvalued in many of these. Is a uh, in, in some of this um, current decline is a is simply a what a cyclical a cyclical effect of of the um, of the previous economic boom. Let's say. What seems more interesting for our discussion, I think, is um, the, let's say, 
uh, disordered character of the of the uh, of the global economic relations. This is when when I was saying before that I think that uh, U.S. unilateralism and, and U.S. wars, like the war in Afghanistan, like a prospective war in Iraq, I think that they're bad for business in the sense that they do not create economic stability. They do not create economic prosperity for for global capital. And I think precisely for that reason, we're seeing many indications of a, um, I think that that contributes to, let's say, the economic stagnation or decline of, of, the, uh, of the United States recently. Even something as simple as the uh, rise of the euro with respect to the dollar seems to me an indication of a, um, of a lack of confidence or approval of, of capitalists in the, in the United States. Um, current project. That said, I, it's it's an uncomfortable question to answer because it has to be one has to add so many other factors. Um, clearly, these phenomena are also linked to the let's say uh, corporate corruption scandals in the United States. In the book, you and Tony Negri argue that the movement for global justice must must accept uh, the guidelines of the early church. And okay, okay, this is just uh, the way of putting it. And yep. it's a so-called profe pro prophetic, how do you pronounce, uh, yep. manifesto around which it must organize the multitude. Uh, but still, how can we compare the movement for global justice, uh, insisting today uh, its ver its ver variety, its most important here, uh, with the homogenic early church? Well, uh, today we have a network of uh, different movements, which even though they strive for global justice exclude each other along the way, like, for example, anarchists versus communists and so on. Uh, your thoughts on that, I mean, is a united prophetic manifesto even uh, possible? Yeah, here I think, um, I think that we just uh, perhaps are expressing ourselves badly or, or being... Just um, correct me and I will use well, your words then, yes. Um, I think what the, the one thing that seems... Uh, that seemed to us interesting about re the early, the um, the movement of the early church of the early Christian era was the um, the approach to the declining empire and the attempt to create an equally global alternative to it. So, reading reading, for instance, Augustine of Hippo's book, The City of God. It seemed to us that this was there was something parallel in, the, in our projects because he saw with the decline of the and the corruption of the Roman Empire that the uh, he um, uh, imagined the the Catholicness of the Church, in other words, its universality, to be a um, a counter empire, a, a different movement. Now that it's only in that sense that we thought that that, that we think that the two should be. Um, paralleled. I agree with you completely that what we have now and what is necessary and what the concept of multitude asks for itself is that there be a um, a movement that does not reduce the variety and differences of those who are involved, that does not have a central uh, determination, that in fact functions like a network so that if there were to be a manifesto it wouldn't be something written by some prophet, it would be a manifesto written by the movements themselves, um, and they, they, they could they could demonstrate how they act in common without denying their diversity and their differences. In other words, that, that, that's what I mean by functioning like a network. That there would be no that there is no center to the movements, and I think quite rightly there isn't. That they that the various groups remain different and don't subordinate themselves to some leaders. Um, and and yet that they manage to act in common. That's what seems to me the the most important function. So well, the 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 hope or the not just rhetorical gestures, even the um, the recognition of similarity for us is when we say 
to attack this corrupt empire, we don't think that we, one should carve out an isolated local space and say, look, it's global, therefore we'll, we'll be local and, and create the small outside, the, the small utopian community. We think, no, in fact, we have to address it on an equally global level. We have to construct a global movement to attack this, this present global order. And, and that, I mean, it's not us inventing these things. That's, that's exactly what the movements are doing. The movements are globalizing themselves. That's, that's been, the, um, that's been the, the tendency for years now, to create more global connections, to recognize our, our links in North America with, with movements in Europe, to recognize their links with movements in South America and Africa, and, and to extend this global network um, to, to a truly universal.